Hello everyone, Inventor719 here, and before I start the video, I'd like to apologize for my voice. I'm currently under the weather a little bit, so I may sound a little bit stuffy. In today's video, we are going to be making a mini flamethrower with an old shell casing and a lighter. What you'll need for this project is of course the bullet shell casing, an old lighter, I already have it disassembled a little bit, a pipette, some scissors, a thumbtack, a hot glue gun, and possibly some tape. You can start by disassembling your lighter. As you can see, I have already done so. I won't show you on camera, but basically just undo some screws, take off the top half, take out the barrel, whatever you want to call it, the trigger. You don't need any of that. All you will need here from your lighter is the gas canister with the pipe or the gas line attached to it and this little piezo electric sparker. Everything else is scrap. Next, to prep your old shell casing, doesn't matter what size it is, but all you have to do is take a drill and drill out the old primer for the proper size so that you can just ever so slightly fit in the pipette in the end. Lastly, prepare your pipette by grabbing your thumbtack and putting a hole at the very top of the pipette just before the bubble goes to a taper. Now that everything is assembled, we're going to go ahead and start assembly. The first step here is just to mount the bullet shell casing on top of the gas tank. This is just to, I'm going to be using the gas tank as a body. So to do that, I'm just going to simply place a bead of hot glue on the top like that. Now this shouldn't be a danger, just to make sure it's super hot and can puncture the plastic because then there'll be butane fumes and of course that is very flammable and toxic. Next up we're going to go ahead and shorten the pipette by cutting it to a length which when fully placed inside of the bullet will leave about half an inch to three centimeters just inside the bullet. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it right there. And then, like I said earlier, you should have made a hole in the back of the shell casing so that you can push the pipette into the casing. It should be a tight fit, but you're going to go ahead and push it in all the way. Then to attach the gas line, what you want to do is cut it to the proper length. Of course it doesn't have to be. You can keep it as long as you want, but I'm going to cut it to the proper length just to clean it up. And then find the hole you poked in earlier with the thumbtack and then just place it in. Again, should be a tight fit because you want a, a tight seal, but place it in, not too far, just maybe a centimeter of the tube inside the pipette. As you can see, there's the tube inside the pipette, and when we push on this trigger, the gas will go through the tube and into the pipette. Then when you squeeze this, all the gas will go into the cartridge and out the barrel. Now that the gas system is in place, we have to go ahead and attach the electrical or the igniting system. And to do that, we're going to be using that piezo sparker we stole from the lighter. I'm going to be placing it here on the side in a trigger-like formation with the button hanging over the edge. So again, to do that, I'm just going to use my hot glue gun, place a bead of hot glue, then go ahead and stick it down. Now for the wires on the sparker, we're going to go ahead and ground the white one to the shell. To do that, just cut off most of the wiring, and then we're going to strip it. Then simply tape it straight to the brass shell casing, which will ground the entire shell. So here is the completed wiring, ready to be tested. As I said, we grounded the white wire. Then for the black one, uh, sorry if it's a little hard to see, but basically, there you can see it kind of. I looped it over. And there's the metal contact in there. It is not touching the edge of the shell, probably a millimeter or an eighth of an inch apart. And uh, our fuel is all loaded up, and now we can do some testing. So I turned on the lights a little bit, so you can see a little better. And basically how you operate it is you go ahead and squeeze the gas valve for just a very short period of time, just like that. Now there's going to be a little bit of gas in here and air in here. 
So the key here is to get the right proportion of air to fuel. So maybe if we try just a little squeeze. Now hopefully in the chamber there's the right proportion. That, that falls off, it's not really secured on. As you can see I got my little blue flame. And of course that changes based on the air to fuel ratio, how much fuel you have in there. So there I gave it a little more fuel this time. Maybe give it another pump. Go ahead and push the trigger. Yeah, so it's not igniting, so maybe we don't have the right amount of fuel. There's a little one. So you get the idea, it's a lot of playing around. This guy here is your gas opening valve, so try not to open that too much, but if you want, just give it the old lefty loosey, open it up a little bit, so that when you pull this, let's some more in. Let's try igniting it again. Nope, so maybe add more fuel. There's a little bit. Or if you do both at the same time, there as you can see it made a, a bigger one. Hard to hear on camera, but it does make a very cool popping noise. So as you can see, if you do it a few times and nothing comes out, you probably need more fuel. Works best if you tip it up like that so the fuel is by the end of the hose. Push it down for literally two to three seconds. Now your canister is loaded up. Like I said, give it a squeeze. There you go. So as long as you have the right air to fuel mixture, it should work. Now, if your tank runs out of gas or you just wanna try something different, you can always use a different type of fuel. So here I have a little mini ax. And as I said before, you only need a very little bit of fuel. So go ahead and squeeze a little bit in there. Go ahead, try lighting it. If it doesn't light, just add a bit of air. You can do both at the same time, try that. There you go. So ax works pretty good. I'll give you one more demonstration here. Put a bit of fuel in there. We're gonna do both at the same time to get that popping effect. Sorry it's hard to show you guys on camera, because... All right, I don't even know how many that was in a row, but it was pretty darn good. And I know it's not a huge flame, it's not meant to be a World War II flamethrower, just a cool little gadget. And until you build it, you won't really know what noise it makes. It is a really cool popping kind of noise. So I say give it a try. Definitely try the Axe fuel, maybe alcohol or something, gasoline, let me know what you think. Uh, it's a lot more explosive than the butane is, which is why I think it lit so many times there. There's probably still some, yeah. We're still getting it igniting. And we probably had like 40 shots off the bat there. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, very cool little gadget here. If you like this, please subscribe. I know I'm not very close, but I'd love to hit a million someday. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.